worldly hopes men set their hearts upon turn ashes, or they prosper, and like snow upon the desert's dusty face, alighting a little hour or two, then are gone. I have long since felt more at home in autumn than in any other season, and I would argue that autumn is the most reflective and the most spiritual of seasons. Long after the energy and vibrance and vitality of spring and summer, we are forced to face the reality that we can't always stay in the light, we can't always stay in the warmth, we can't always stay in the sun. And for every up season, there must be a down season too. It would be wise to make friends with this fact. It would be wise not to shut it out, not to try and hide away, but to embrace this fact and to take a deeper look at what is happening. So autumn, cooler. And I find it starts to become more calm, as you can see all around me, where once was green, is beginning to turn brown and black. And so we must begin to reflect on death and the cycle of life. Now, viewed in a particular way, death is a most morbid thing. Particularly in Western culture, we have a morbid fascination with the darkness and the horror of the idea of death that one day all will cease. But this is a natural part of the cycle of life. And it is crucial to acknowledge and accept this if we wish to be happy while we are alive. Chattering finch and waterfly are not merrier than I. Here, among the flowers I lie, laughing everlastingly. No, I may not tell the best. Surely, friends, I might have guessed. Death was but the good king's jest. It was hid so carefully. Now, this is not to say that we should poke fun at or make light of death. Because it simply doesn't work like that. However... Spirituality and finding peace is as much about taking a look at the dark as it is taking a look at the light. By turning and facing the shadow, the shadows within us and the shadows around us, we can find an element of peace because we are no longer afraid and turning away from this darkness. So why? Why is death nothing to be feared? Well... There was a time before you were born. There was a time before you were born. Were you bothered by anything? Were you troubled by anything? And yet, many things continued. There was still energy. There was still life and vibrance. You simply weren't around to witness it. This went on for an eternity before you showed up. You turned up to this wonderful planet with this wonderful mind and this wonderful body. Now you are here to witness it. As brief a time as that may be, there will also come a time when you are not here to witness it anymore. And yet it will continue. And it will all carry on. Now you may not necessarily inhabit the same form. You may not manifest in the same being. In fact, you, of course you won't. You, you absolutely won't. But something continues. I don't need to tell you what that is. I think you already know. But as it states in the poem by Chesterton there, death was but the good king's jest, and it was hid so carefully. It takes great pains to hide itself from us, the transient 
ephemeral nature of it all, and our mind in its franticness and in its unhappiness tries to hold on and to make things permanent, and it's by our holding on and attaching, trying to make things permanent that by their very nature are not permanent, this is the cause of our suffering. Allowing yourself to let go while you still walk. This is the true Zen. To die before you die. So from that perspective, autumn starts to take on an eerie, peculiar beauty to it. Not necessarily one where we are leaping for joy as we are in spring enjoying the radiance, the heat, and our youth in summer. But as we move calmly into autumn, we can begin to reflect, find peace in the knowledge that all is temporary. Everything is fleeting. Worldly hopes men set their hearts upon an ash, or they prosper, and like snow upon the desert's dusty face, alighting a little hour or two, then 